Hi guys, it's George from Fermenti Kitchen and this is going to be our updated basic sourdough bread recipe. It's been much requested. I'm going to just walk you through our current method of making our sourdough bread and along the way I'll provide you with some tips and tricks that we've picked up over the last year or so. For this recipe you'll need 350 grams of water making it fairly high hydration, 500 grams of bread flour, 8 grams of salt and 80 grams of active starter. This is how much the starter grew overnight as you can see. Uh, you have to make sure that it is nice and bubbly and in the description I will type up the current way that we are, uh, we are feeding the starter. First add the salt and then we're going to add 80 grams of the starter. So mix it really well and then add the flour. Keep mixing until no dry flour remains. As you can see, we're not doing autolyse, which is when you first mix water with flour, wait for 30 minutes and then add the rest of the ingredients, because we think it's completely unnecessary when you're baking with sourdough. Because with sourdough, you already have really long bulk and prov proving times, so it basically there is no need to autolyse, despite what some people <laughs> will say. If you look at some of the recent videos by like Bread Code and Food Geek, they did lots of extensive tests, and their conclusion was that with sourdough, autolyse is not necessary. So save yourself some time, and just mix everything together and start, start the bulk rise immediately. We're going to cover it with a damp cloth and let it rest for 30 minutes until first set of stretch and fold. To help you keep track of all the stretch and folds and the ball cries and etc, I highly recommend downloading some sort of multi-timer app. This one's called Multi-Timer on Android. And as we have now mixed it, I'm going to start my, t my timers for three stretch and folds, as well as four hour proof. In the winter, uh, the, 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 the initial bulk rise uh, might be as, as much as six hours. It really depends on the temperature, but because now it's warmer, it's about 22 degrees in our kitchen, I'm going to bulk rise for four hours. Time to do our first stretch and fold. So you know the drill, just grab it from the side, pull it up and stretch it back down. You can also do slap and fold on your countertop if you want. It's completely up to you, but we found that this is the most convenient and easiest method. Time to do our third and final stretch and fold and we still have two and a half, two and a half hours left for the ball cries. Make it into a smooth round ball and then cover it. It's been almost four hours and as you can see uh, it has risen quite a lot, it's bubbly, it's active, it's got bubbles on top and it's quite jiggly which is always a good sign. As I said it's about 23-24 degrees right now so I think four hours should be okay. For if it's about 18 or 20 degrees like in the winter then I'll give it maybe six hours. 
we're going to start pre-shaping the dough. We're not going to use flour at this stage. So I just have some water in a bowl here. I'm just going to wet the clean surface here. And I'm going to tip it over. You can see all the bubbles at the back. So there's, can you see the strands? There in the 80s. It has started to ferment nicely. That's what it should look like. Some bubbles, it's quite light in there. So what we're gonna do is spread it out a little bit, not too much, and then make it into a bowl. You can wet your hands so it doesn't stick to you too much. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll flip it over and we're going to no, don't don't tighten it too much just can basically make it into a bowl I'm going to wet this area here and place it there and rest it there for 30 minutes let the gluten relax so then we can do the final shape of course if you're making more than one if you're making more than one um, dough then you basically you weigh each piece of the dough and you separate them and make them into balls like that and you let them rest for 30 minutes. So now we're going to use flour, sprinkle it on top and then with a bam scraper flip it over. Now I'm going to stretch it out on the top and the bottom and then left and right. There are many ways that you can uh, shape the, the dough, you can shape the bread. I still haven't found one that works really well consistently, but this is so far one of my uh, favorite ways of doing it. So basically the way you do it is you grab the bottom you just pull it in the middle like that then we fold in right and then you fold in the left then you're going to grab this top and bring it all the way over here to the bottom and basically start shaping it pinch the sides and then start shaping it into an oval shape so you can use your scraper these in can use a bit more flour if it's sticking too much but before we do that for the final shape we're going to dust the Benetton I'm using obviously an oval Benetton and going to use 50 50 mix of rice flour and bread flour this is really really good mix in terms of stopping the benetton from sticking to the dough so we're going to liberally just the benetton on all sides okay so benetton's now ready cool so now we can do the final shape again it's sticking a little bit so just going to dust it. And at the end, I like to do this kind of like uh, just tuck it in. I'm going to use this shower cap to cover the Benetton. And now you have two options. 
One is to bake it tomorrow morning, which is what we're going to do, or bake it today. So if you do it tomorrow, there's many advantages of, the, of putting it in a fridge and baking it tomorrow because the dough will rise a lot slower, it will develop better flavour and also importantly it will keep its shape much better when you take it out of the Benetton you have more time to score, put it in the oven and so on it's not going to lose its shape as, quicker, as quick as it would if we bake it right now so that's the first option, put it in the fridge immediately, bake it tomorrow morning Second option is to leave it out on the counter for half an hour. Essentially, you can start preheating your oven immediately and basically bake it in the same way that you that we will tomorrow morning. Cool. Putting it in the fridge and it's about four degrees in the fridge. Next morning, preheat your oven on maximum temperature. For me, that's 250 celsius and place your cast iron dutch oven in there to begin with you want to preheat it for at least 30 minutes but i recommend one hour and if you have a pizza stone or pizza steel also place your cast iron pan on top of that it will help the oven retain its heat as an alternative if you don't have a cast iron pan we recommend the pyrex a chicken roaster like this one it's 5.9 liter one and it works really really well otherwise you can just use like a 28 centimeter pyrex bowl and essentially cover your dough with that it will help retain that moisture and heat um, so you get a nice rice take out your cast iron pan Open it, Ooh. and now we're going to score the bread. Take out your dough from the fridge, and I highly recommend using a parchment paper, it will just make it easier to plop it into your half iron pan. So just I move it around like this, just so it loosens up. Remove excess flour with a little brush. Okay. Then I'm using the 50-50 mix of bread flour and rice flour. <clears throat> this will just give it a nice contrast at the end. Just do it very lightly. Rice flour is, is good to use because it doesn't brown. So on this side, I'm just going to add some leaves, like this, and then I'm going to go for a, an ear. So I'm going to cut one uh, along this line here. It's quite deep. I'll go over again. There we go. So you can see it's nicely fermented in there. It's a good sign. It's holding its shape fairly well. So I'm quite excited. Okay, we're going to bake it for 20 minutes on maximum heat. We're going to now turn it down to 220 degrees and bake it for another 20 minutes. Basically we bake it at 250 initially because you want to you want to get that oven rise. We'll put it back for 5 more minutes. Place it on a cooling rack and let it cool down to room temperature before cutting into it. Make sure you don't cut it before, otherwise it will become gummy.